Good evening, I'm political editor Dennis Welch. This is Politics Unplugged, and former President Donald Trump did plead guilty, not guilty, to 37 counts accusing him of improperly handling sensitive documents. Despite his legal troubles, Trump remains the frontrunner for the Republican presidential nomination next year. And with so many Arizona Republicans hitching their wagons to the former president, I invited longtime Republican consultants Wes Gullett and Doug Cole to talk about what this indictment means here uh, in Arizona, but first I want to talk about you know what we're seeing, if you can kind of translate what we're seeing right now, because yes, this is a legal case, but it's also a PR case that the president is fighting right now as well. And you know, I think some of the stuff we've seen initially, PR moves, especially with you know the, the former president going to a Cuban restaurant in Miami and things like this. Tell us what's going on here. Well, this is right in Trump's playbook. I mean, here, here we are talking about Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about how Modelo's now the number one beer in the United States mm -hmm. over Budweiser, mm -hmm. Bud Light. We're talking about Donald Trump. We're playing right into his hand. This is where he wants to be. This is, you know, where he fights and, and riles up his supporters. Mm -hmm. um, and it's working. And it's working. And how important is, you know, a PR case in a legal situation like this? I mean, how important can that be in shaping the outcomes here? Well, because we don't know when the outcome of the trial can be. It can be extended forever, years and years. And so there may not be a trial before the election. And so we won't find out. And so Trump is using this as a great PR strategy to attack the institutions that he wants to run mm -hmm. um, and say how out of control they are so that he needs to get back in put them under control. And it seems to be working. If you look at polls, I mean, yeah. he, ha he hasn't lost any support. He's still the overwhelming favor leading the field by a lot right now. Why is it working? Well, because he can go out and, and, and put out these fundraising emails and run up his fundraising uh, uh, operation and bring in dollars that's going to fuel the campaign that just keeps going. Mm -hmm. And remember, these, he's up to 71 counts now between mm -hmm. between the feds and, and New York State. We still have Georgia to go. Mm -hmm. We still have the January 6th thing out there. This is just going to continue. And it can go on forever and ever, and he can play the victim. And you know, why, how come we don't see more Republicans distancing themselves, particularly here in Arizona? I mean, it seems like the, not, you know, the, the nomination, the presidency goes through Donald Trump, but the entire, you know, machine of the Republican Party seems to flow from him as well. Well, I'm a uh, state committeeman in the Republican Party, and I will distance myself right here from him. <laughs> but uh, what we see is politicians who know that that 37 percent is strong and they need it to win the primary. The trouble with Trump is he could win the primary. He can be the front runner in the primary. That's only half the battle. It's something that Carrie Lake forgot yeah. mm -hmm. that, it, you know, you have two elections. One is a general election. And in that general election, Trump is in a free fall. Mm -hmm. And what, let's talk a little bit about those yeah. political, the political fallout from there. Like Wes had just brought up, we saw that in 2022. A lot of people blame Donald Trump and his handpicked candidates uh, for losing seats that Republicans should or could have picked up. I mean, is that what we see a risk here in Arizona next year with other races? Because so many people here have pitched, have just tied themselves so closely yeah. to this, to this, the former president. Um, you know, there's no way to shake it. At this well, point. first of all, he's made he's made the Republican Party his party. Uh -huh. It is the party of Donald Trump right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Secondly, in 2016, he had independence in Arizona. Remember, in Arizona is a third, a third, and third. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have independence in Arizona anymore. This isn't 2016 again. And like Kerry Lake and others uh, in the last election. They didn't pay attention and go after those voters mm -hmm. or the moderate Republicans. And do you see this, you know, this having an effect on him, just the, 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 the totality of everything that's going on? I mean, you know, Doug had just mentioned, we'll probably likely see more indictments going forward. We're also seeing some Republican, uh, his Republican opponents, and I mean, stress some, a couple of them, um, you know, taking on the president publicly. Could this, you know, take a toll over the long run and continue and maybe hammer at and chip away at his support? Well, y yes, it will. Um, and, and two things. One, in a Republican primary, if we have 10 candidates, Trump's 37 percent is always <laughs> going to be in first place. Mm -hmm. And so until it gets down to two, and if it ever gets down to two, um, we're not going to see Trump anywhere but in the first place. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of your question about Arizona, What's going to happen is the Republicans who tie themselves, if they're in any kind of a close race, they're going to have trouble because he is not going to be good. 
it is good for the general election and good for Republicans who have to run with him. Can you imagine being in a swing district and having to run with Donald Trump? I, one picture of Kate McGee with a women for Trump former sign. State, former state lawmaker. For, yeah. Former state senator. senator. Moderate, moderate, lost moderate, lost moderate. her her election. Mm -hmm. um, that's what's going to happen in the general election. But the Democrats need to get uh, field enough candidates to actually win a majority. Mm -hmm. Last time they forgot to uh, field to, enough yeah, candidates. Yeah, so right. mm -hmm. if they field enough candidates and they're good candidates, um, we're going to be in trouble as Republicans in this state, and people need to wise up about it. Yeah, and you'd mentioned, you know, can you imagine running, you know, in a in a, in a swing district um, with Donald Trump? I, I, that's one thing. One thing I could never imagine when I first started doing this, and I'd love to get your take on this. In, in a political race, if your opponent all of a sudden gets indicted just once, let alone multiple times, that's like manna from the political gods, right? That's right. like you go yeah. on the attack, yeah, exactly. you're calling for them to get out of the race. We are not seeing that. Black and white mailers, yeah, we, really yeah. scary. <laughs> yes. We are not seeing that yeah. from all the, all the you know, candidates running to win in the Republican nomination for president. Why? Well, we continue to live in the upside down with Donald Trump. Yeah. Uh, you know, no one can quit him. It's like Brokeback Mountain. Mm -hmm. No one, no one they, they wish they knew how to quit him, but they yeah. can't. Yeah. And, and it, it just continues on. And, and this is just going to have to play through. Yeah, and did you ever think you'd see a, a situation like this where somebody's political opponent <laughs> gets indicted and his opponents are saying, you know, are kind of backing him? If not, right. if not backing no, him, they're, you know, they're, and, they're attacking everything else right. except him. And, and attacking the institutions yes. that are yes. bringing right. the case. Um, yeah, it is completely... Uh, a different scenario, but it, it's always been different ever since uh, Donald Trump came down that escalator. Mm -hmm. Everything has been different in, in a, a Republican politics anyway. Mm -hmm. and, and it's that attack on the institutions that's so debilitating for our democracy. Um, and, and that's what we've got to watch. And if he loses, he'll just say the election was, was rigged. rigged. Right. Right, and, it, and and they aren't rigged. Yeah. They are <laughs> they're not. not. They're not. They're and I can't agree with Wes Moore. The the attack on on our institutions, the the election denialism, is is eroding our democracy, and that's what's so troubling. And final question: I want to get your guys' take on some of the rhetoric we're seeing mm -hmm. from Republican, from um, high ranking or high profile Republicans in Arizona, Carrie Lake. Andy Biggs. Andy Biggs is saying that we've now entered the war phase. This came an out eye after for the eye. Eye, eye for an eye. eye, for an eye. Uh, you know, Carrie Lake saying that uh, you know if they want to get Donald Trump, they're going to have to go through the NRA, the National Rifle Association, card carrying members of that. I want to get your take on the rhetoric coming out. Well, that's to be expected from from those two individuals that you just talked about because they have hitched their wagon. They have nowhere to go except to stay on that wagon. Yeah, and it's think, not going to be successful at the end, yeah. but. And, and do you, you think go. this is dangerous? I mean, Paul Charlton, the former U.S. attorney for Arizona, told me that he sees that as an invitation to violence and that it could, some people could take their anger, you see, see comments like that, and turn their anger into action. I, I absolutely agree with Paul. And we've got to guard against that. And yes. we can't allow that as a, civil, uh, as a civilized society. We can't do that. that. That golden thread is what holds us all together, and that's elections. And when we deny these institutions, we create havoc for the whole country. All right. Well, thanks a lot. We're going to have to end well, it right you. there. And still, 